what you call it this is coming from lipids so the higher the fat higher the reactive species Now, with this particular thing, we have radicals, free radicals being generated in the body constantly, and then, like our sugar, like our blood pressure, certain amount of free radicals are required for the health. But <coughs> only when it goes higher, we see the bad effects. So this is what it shows. This pyramid shows. that if it is too less you have lack of signaling lack of host descent and pathological compensation and if it is in medium you are happy you are in health if it is too much you have a overshot signaling and non specific damage this is that's and with what it reacts target the free radical start form when it is formed in excess with what components of the body it reacts you can see it has covered almost everything it has covered sugar it has covered lipids it has covered uh, hereditary material dna and rna our enzymes proteins everything it can react next so now what is the documentation that high reactive or oxidative stress can lead to what diseases i think it is all named here you name the diseases it is there and it is documented more than 100 diseases or maybe the result of oxidative stress now what does body do when it goes excess we have here repair mechanism body has an inbuilt repair mechanism it tries to take care of it and then we have the prevention mechanisms that is if it goes high then certain other enzymes will be stopped so that this reactive uh, species cannot be formed and then we have the physical defenses and as well as the last thing which i am talking about is about this antioxidant defense so antioxidant defense inside the body we have certain enzymes which immediately removes the free radicals that is reactive species and we have the low molecular weight i said it is a chain reaction from one to the other from superoxide ion to hydrogen peroxide to some other thing and this chain reaction is stopped from doing that with low molecular antioxidant and then we have some of them are synthesized by the cell some of them are waste products like uric acid and some of them can be that has to be direct resources only one thing so what are these antioxidants how do they define so as per the biological definition antioxidant is any substance that can directly scavenge that can remove the reactive species or indirectly act to upregulate the antioxidant defenses of the body or it can inhibit or restrict so these are the three main things so which any any compound which can do any of these things can be called as an anti antioxidant so we have this system antioxidant endogenous body and exogenous from plants and food and everything and we have these these two have to act synergistically to bring back the level to the normal and then remarkable if even though there is a remarkable efficiency inside the body they have to depend on plant and exogenous and then what uh, humans have to depend on the principal dietary antioxidants of from fruits vegetables grains or vitamins preservatives and polyphenols that is where you see nowadays flavonoid rich tea you must have seen the advertisement and i had a discussion with her chai will, uh, is rich in fluoride also 
but you can see that one flavonoid you are happy your uh, diabetic will be taken care your heart problem will be taken care and your <coughs> cancer will be taken care next so we next also next huh. i'm going to talk about the exogenous antibodies because the body makes something it it takes care but what we are doing about the exogenous from bahar so then we have got vitamins most important are vitamin c and e and then trace elements zinc and selenium and then carotenoids that we get from uh, beta carotene like a pin tomato and uh, so many other sources and then we have phenolic acids or plants polyphenols from plants then ha huh. now we are talking about free radical and antioxidant so how are we going to measure whether i am having oxidative stress i want to know how are we going to measure are we going to determine ros or are we going to determine our antioxidant capacity ros is very difficult i said 10 to the power of minus second so we cannot do that so what all we can do is from our serum we can determine what you call is total antioxidant activity ta nowadays many at least commercial kits are available where you can take and just like you are measuring blood sugar or cholesterol you can even measure this total antioxidant capacity so there is also if they have put some normal range your serum should have this type of normal range if it is more it is dangerous if it's less that's also dangerous you should have in next so we have come up to the thing we have in the body and the external sources and the inside body reactive switches is balanced this is what we want but then when there is a more of a oils less of antioxidants we are our thing is going down so that means the balance is problem and we have more of uh, this is the less of kox in the body or from external sources more produced in the body then also you have a problem next please so now we come to the question can if we are having an oxidative stress can we prevent we know now oxidative stress can lead to so many diseases can we prevent this by taking antioxidant supplementation okay so then supplementation in fact goes back to 20th century beginning because when vitamins were considered as a uh, deficiency diseases came up so vitamin supplementation was required there the tablets were formed vitamin c vitamin a everything so at that time to prevent this deficiency system so the supplementation was given in the form of pharmaceutical and then when you exogenous particularly vitamins because under the longer uh, what a survey people were found who were taking this exogenous antioxidants particularly vitamin considered being healthy and safe and the third antioxidants among now this led to antioxidant most popular health pro uh, protecting products in us without prescription and then you can in a product as i said you antioxidant rich fruits and vegetables led to good health next so in the last two decades what is happening is this supplementation changed from treating deficiency to preventing various of diseases now the deficiency man we can be healthy we are not deficient in vitamin c or vitamin a or anything but still we gulp antioxidants because we are due to that all the things are oxidative stress problems so can we take this antioxidant and be healthy this is a process of aging in the aging some chronic diseases do come and everybody is so anxious that we should remain healthy 
So the only thing pharmaceuticals can do is take this antioxidant. You will be healthy. So then the term, in fact, for that type of thing, it came as nutraceutical. That is uh, pharmaceutical and nutrition combined. So what you have point for the nutrition and pharmaceutical and a food that provides medical or health benefits including the prevention and or treatment of a disease. But it has transformed, you know, in US alone, it was greater than 64 billion dollars in 2011. So this much of, and one thing is there, for these type of nutraceuticals or whatever it is, there is no very stringent uh, guidelines. Like we make the amlaka thing, sometimes so many things you can put up, it doesn't have to go to FDO or something like that. You can just sell. So now what are the general observations? We have spent a lot of money, may not be in India, but around the globe. So can this type of supplementation, can it really help benefits? Now as far as this thing, environmental pollutants and antioxidant supplementation, very less literature. There may be, we are talking about vitamin C, but always we combine that vitamin C with calcium and vitamin D. So what is the effect of vitamin C only? Is it really required or is it a sort of a supplement which you are just giving? Still not very clear. And the second is several supplementation strategies have been tested in humans, especially for cancer. And what are all the reagents which have been tried with the carotene, vitamin A, vitamin C, selenium, retinol, zinc, and so on? Outcome very confusing. And beneficial in few trials. Here there are two things. One is prevention, which we are thinking. We should not get cancer. Second thing which we are thinking is, we have got already cancer, but we want to be, uh, the you know, reduce the chemotherapy, reduce the radiotherapy, can in that way, can. that is the preventing and therapy. So, in both the things, it is really very confusing. We cannot get a real picture. And then, in fact, in many of the large clinical trials, Antioxidant supplements do not prevent disease. That is the recent 2012. And then it can even be associated with a poor health. Yes. Now, what is happening? Why it is happening when we know this type of antioxidants should help? Because plant, uh, this, our vegetables are good, fruits are good. But when we are giving a concentrated form, why it is not really getting into the required thing. Then the recent paper says it is a double-edged effects. That is, that is smaller concentration, all these things, beneficial effects happen. At a higher <coughs> concentration, harmful effects go up. Because after all, antioxidant, what it does, it is taking up some electrons from your reactive species that itself gets uh, reduced, that has to have something else. Now, can we let this? So the possible reason is, physiological doses are very small, but what we are dumping is too high. We don't need that much. And then the second is, they may localize at a subcellular place. For example, vitamin E, it is not soluble in water. It is only soluble in fat, lipid. So all the vitamin B which we are taking, going into one particular place, there the local concentration becomes too high and the whole effect is gone. And the third one is, uh, this is the, it can also have a prooxidant. It can act as a prooxidant, especially vitamin C is known. For example, at lower concentration, it becomes an anti, but when you increase the concentration, it becomes a pro. This pro 
oxidant is it increases the reactive species. So that means your health gain is gone. So that's so now the recent hypothesis is there. <laughs> this is the last one. Antioxidant induced stress. <laughs>